Hi, I'm Will. I'm Norm. Norm, we are here outside your apartment in San Francisco, California. And we have something, a project that you've been spending the last month on. I spent a little bit of time here and there. Uh, the idea was to build a third person camera. It's not anything new, people have done it before. Yeah. Um, but with off the shelf parts, using high def video. Because everybody before has done like VGA video, so you can pipe it across 900 megahertz mm -hmm. streaming and stuff like that. This is all high def, so it's all 720p from source to output on your head. Uh, and I've got it right here. So it looks pretty hoopty. Yeah, when you went online, you asked the readers, you know, to, to, for recommendations yeah. for products you, we should use. Yeah. And you found a bunch of different cameras. And mm -hmm. the camera you chose, you end up with, was the GoPro. This is the HD Hero 2. It's 300 bucks. Uh, basically, it's a little tiny 1080p, uh, 30 frames per second camera. Uh, and it's it's shockproof. It comes with waterproof houses. It comes with a ton of different cases, which is mm -hmm. the important thing. Uh, and I was able to just mount it with a tripod mount to this, which is a carbon fiber monopod. It was very inexpensive, it was 50 bucks at Best Buy. Because weight is a big consideration. I, I was concerned about weight, but I also wanted telescoping so that you could adjust the distance from where it mounts on the backpack to where the camera is for mm -hmm. different height people. That, in my initial test, the distance of camera to, to the back of your head made a huge difference yeah. in whether you were able to So while do the GoPro does, you know, it's a fairly wide field of view. It's a 170 degree field of view with the default lenses. Right, how far back from your head is Makes very important. It. The key seemed to be being able to see your feet uh, for walking around, especially on unfamiliar surfaces. Like walking around the living room was no big deal without being able to see your feet. Walking around outside on uneven surfaces, you have to see your feet or you're going to wipe out. So as you can see, I'm still experimenting with ways to keep the monopod in the, in the mount that goes on the backpack. Uh, and I'm actually still experimenting with ways to mount the backpack, the, the bike stem mount on the, on the backpack itself. But this is just a normal um, bike stem. It's just a normal bike stem. So it goes on the, on the, the thing that lets you turn the front wheel, uh, and then the handlebars go in, the, in this part here. It ends up being exactly the right angle. You can adjust the angle with this fitting right here. I tried a bunch of different ones. This seems to be the best one. The trick is getting the monopod to go in there, because the default for the monopod was too big for the bike stem. So I took this guy, which is just a, um, it's just like a rubber foot that you put on a chair, cut the tip off of it to slam it down there, and then the duct tape is just to keep from this from sliding up too far. The mini HDMI on the camera runs into the back of this guy right here. This is just the control box for the Sony headset. I, I, this is a loaner from Sony, so I didn't want to take it apart and, um, and, and try to bypass the transformer inside and wire it directly mm -hmm. into a DC battery. Uh, so I'm actually having to use AC battery, but this is a 720p uh, 3D headset. We're not using 3D, unfortunately, with this, although that is possible if you had a way to combine the two uh, two GoPro signals into one 3D signal. And there is audio the from here, so it takes audio from the GoPro as the, well. The audio is really dis distracting though. I, I actually usually mute that when I set it up and, and right. I'm testing it out. Uh, this is a long sleeve black t-shirt that is great for blocking glare when you have the headset on. This guy uses AC power, so uh, I have in the battery back, in the backpack I have a big battery. Huh. Uh, that's this guy right here. This is the Goal Zero. Uh, it's the Escape 150. It's Basically a 50 watt hour battery. It's a lead acid battery. In this case, uh, it seems like it'll run it for at least three or four hours, which is the battery life of the GoPro. Mm -hmm. So that works out about right. And this is charges over a uh, mini USB. That charges over mini USB. I don't think you can run that plugged into mini USB and shoot video at the same time. So I'll have to test that out and sure, see. You're constrained by the power on the GoPro and on the, the, the headset. It seems like the GoPro power is gonna be the big limitation. Uh, this guy weighs about 13 pounds. It is a lead acid battery, so like the kind in your car. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it will power uh, the headset, which draws about 13 watts at most for uh, two, three and a half hours probably, if everything works out okay. And it includes an inverter, so you can plug 120 volt AC stuff. And that's, that's, this is the, the big weight. This is the big weight, yeah. This is the heaviest thing by far. The monopod weighs maybe a pound, and the headset yeah. weighs about a little bit over a pound. So uh, that's it, the backpack is the last piece. Uh, I went to REI and asked for an external frame backpack, and they kind of laughed. They don't sell those anymore. They don't make those yeah, anymore. Like back in the 90s, you go backpacking with the Boy Scouts, you had external frames. So they actually, they gave you this one for free. Yeah, they gave me this for free. Oh, uh, cool. If you want to find one like it, you can go to Swap Meets or, or Flea Markets or eBay. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you can find an external frame backpack. Odds are you have one like this in your garage. Yeah, you want the external frame because it has a bar at the bottom. It, it was easy to mount. Yes. Um, if you can't find an external frame backpack, the closest thing I could find was like a kid carrier. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of child carriers that have, uh, like you put your kid in a backpack. Uh, that have external frames on them. So and then you have this one last wire here, and this wire kind of uh, braces the, the monopod. Yeah, so this is the other place that I have work to do still. 
Uh, basically, I've I've got this triangle tri tripod rig where the t two top parts of the tripod are just, uh, this is just the kind of wire used to hang portraits. Yeah. You could use anything, you could use rope. I'm not real keen on the way this is working right now because there's just too much sway back and forth. So I think I'm actually gonna release it, l let it go out a little bit further um, and find, I wanna find a way to make this a little bit more rigid so it doesn't move side to side as well as up and down. Uh, but that's it, that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah. All told, the total price tag for everything is gonna be about $1,200. Uh, the battery back backup's 150, the camera's 300. The tripod mount for the camera was another 20. The and monopod the was most 50, expensive. And that's 800, which is the most expensive. Yes. Um, if you didn't want to do high def, you can get a set of glasses that are $300, $400. And I've even seen how to's for those where they mount, where somebody takes a pair of ski goggles and cuts a square out for those and then mounts them in the ski goggles and blacks it over. So you don't have much more comfortable. The t shirt over your head. Yeah, and, I, and you don't have to have the weird mark on your forehead either from the head, headrest on that guy. All right, well, let's put um, this on and let's see uh, if you can yeah, walk down the street. You with got it. to try it a little bit yesterday, but yeah. I've done a little bit more work on it since then. And I'm going to pretty it up a little bit before Maker Fair, so it's not quite such a mess. All right, let's, let's walk around with your third person camera rig, Will. So that's the third person camera. Uh, it's it's hoopty, but it's all off the shelf. And it really is a surreal experience. It's super weird walking around. I mean, it, it took you, what, maybe five minutes to get used to it? Yeah. It seems about average. I put it on three or four people at this point. Um, it's something you could definitely do at home. I don't know that it's worth spending the money on, uh, but if you have a chance to try it, it's pretty cool and definitely weird. Do it in your backyard, not in the street. Yeah, don't cross the street. For Tested, I'm Will. I'm Norm. We'll see you guys later. Bye.